good morning, good day, or whatever time you're watching this, Tracy Brown here. And so today I want to talk a little bit about the different nuances of introducing intuitive eating work in our potential clients, our current clients. And this would seem like a no-brainer. I mean, why would people contact us if um, they weren't interested in maybe a different approach, a non-diet approach, or whatever? And I would say, well, you probably all already have experience with people coming to you. They, people have maybe heard of intuitive eating. And one, they usually don't know at all what it really, really means. And two, once you get into it, they're like, whoa, this is more than what I bargained for. So um, I want to share with you two circumstances I just currently had. I'm talking like today and um, later last week. And these are, this isn't like the first time this has happened for me, which is it's, it just goes to show you how frequent it does happen. This is why I'm sharing this with you. Okay, so last week, I just gonna jump right in and because this week we're gonna do a couple of videos. Today it's gonna be about people who are just coming from like, when I say just, I mean, you don't have to have had a clinical eating disorder to suffer greatly for decades and desire treatment or help. So anyway, I had a person contact me who had found my name from somebody, maybe a sponsor. She's an OA or um, I believe that she's still in it. Um, so it's a really interesting story. So coming from OA, kind of still in it, working on some steps. And, um, but also it seems like her sponsor is also kind of doing, trying to work through the intuitive eating um, road as well. So she introduced this client. So this client or potential client, she's gone about like watching podcasts, um, reading stuff, which is really great. And then she contacts me basically just trying to figure out what this is all about. And, um, she ended up, she ended up, um, sorry about that. I'm trying to turn off a notification. So we did like a little, I think half hour introductory kind of call. And we're talking about, and really, I didn't talk about much about intuitive eating at all. I wanted to know like what she was struggling with, what her, um, um, experience was so far with eating with full maybe less um, restriction her relationship with her weight um, and all that and she's like yeah 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 I read some stuff I get that like I don't food's fine I just need to learn how to slow down and as I started to get m more in touch with well, what makes her think that she needs to slow down what are her indicators about that and she kept bringing up like you know overwhelm and frustration and resentment and all that so it kind of veered away from the food for a second but it was really interesting. The more I kept asking her about the food, the more she would change the topic. So that led me to have a little bit of suspicion that the food was more of a thing and control of the food was more of a thing than maybe she was letting on. Now this client didn't decide to work with, with me for one-on-one -on -one coaching, but she wanted, she bought, um, um, you know, one of my, you know, kind of, I have like, um, it's interesting what she chose, which is the grounding, um, 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 the kind of some of the some more somatic work I do, I have like a little six series, um, you know, audios about that. Plus it has full permission to eat in there. So really interesting what she chose. And so I do hope this is like a doorway in for her to realize like there's a lot, a lot more to this than like, here are the principles, um, which is, um, what I don't think that she quite grasped yet. Um, but in that conversation, when I did talk about like intuitive eating, isn't really a free for all, but it really is about her, um, going through the process of learning how to, you know, sometimes eat fully, truly what we need to eat, even if it isn't like a total match for the body's nutritional needs, whatever, because we'll get around to that. And there was a level of like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, I just want to be more in control. And that was the vibe. And so what we do sometimes is just plant seeds of like, this is what intuitive eating really is. It isn't another diet to get it right, to be in more control. It's, you know, we are human beings that are going to have, sometimes we're going to emotionally eat, but we want to know what's going on with that. We want to know what's going on in inner, inner train around that. So we don't feel out of control. And eventually you're going to want to, you're probably going to get to the place as an intuitive eater where you bring in maybe some, I hate to use strategies, but some 
habits or implement some things that help you feel more vital or whatever. And that might look a little bit, hopefully not too similar, but a little bit similar to what you try to do when you're always trying to control everything and diet. Um, and by the way, this, this potential person here, um, you know, as I was talking to her, you know, she wouldn't fall into some kind of eating disorder category. It would be chronic dieter and then emotional eating, um, which is what she identified with. Um, and that's what she felt like she needed to control, which is, you know, why I was really, really clear about introducing intuitive eating in a way of like, you know, actually giving yourself full permission to learn how to be with even emotional eating circumstances is what at the end of the day helps us be more in control. And so that's the way I introduce intuitive eating to this kind of person. Now let's flip it to a different kind of client. Again, someone who would not be characterized as a person who has an eating disorder. We're going to do those sessions or those discussions later on this week. Again, this is a current client who's a little bit different presentation. Um, her eating varies from um, either not enough or to just whatever and almost enough, but you know, not over like super restrictive for her and her body and all that kind of stuff. And a little orthorexic and her bottom line is recognizing that all of these behaviors have so much to do with, um, you know, just numbing out, um, emotions and current life relationships and circumstances. This bring a lot of baggage and pain and all that. So, She's not a typical eating disorder client per se, um, because she's willing to gain weight. She's willing to theoretically eat more food, but it needs to be in the right kind of way. Again, and this is a pretty typical disorder thing you're going to hear, but the difference with this person, she had cancer and right now she's free of it in remission. And so there's a lot of fear. So she's got that overlay of, I can't really eat what I want because of my past or of what happened in my, what might happen in the future. And so this is a client he doesn't trust as well. And so for her, I'm really, I'm honestly having to really drop little drops of how food control is the opposite. And she's very holistic by the way, in terms of like, um, you know, she, you know, she's in the functional medicine kind of mindset as well. So she reads all that kind of stuff. About toxic food and all that but for her we're talking more about like the body doesn't label food as toxics or not we just get feedback from our body we get information if we're not eating enough out of the guise of avoiding toxic food then how healthy are you really and is it really all that holistic what you're doing and so this is in those little drops like little um, medicine dropper kind of ways, dropping in um, the tenets and the reality of intuitive eating and how it works and how it can benefit us in the long run, eating in a way that is as honoring of our bodies as we can be in any current circumstance we're in, our resourcing, whatever. So I don't always go full blast, <laughs> guns a blazing with tenets of intuitive eating in sessions. Um, I introduce it in the droplets and maybe big cupfuls depending on their um, ability to take it in because I think that we do tend to here's all the information blast over their head and they're ready to take it in and sometimes they're not and we get that's where resistance is going to come from is it like here's their view of how to protect themselves whether emotionally health wise whatever and we're blasting at them that, that doesn't matter that's not true um, yeah we're not gonna get very far and even with the client I'm talking about, I've totally made some mistakes in um, challenging her too soon to be honest I mean it was very gentle but it was still more than her system could take in because of her history and you know now she's building some like foundation of um, safety and feeling like she can trust more with me and her therapist and so things are moving along um, she has some therapists for some other mental health stuff um, and this wasn't the identified problem. I got this referral just because um, it kept popping in um, in the sessions, you know, around in the, in the therapy sessions. So this is what that referral happened. But um, and luckily, this therapist was someone who values obviously um, the role of either 
a recovery coach or a dietitian or whatever to you know take that and that's the way basically as well y'all if you're marketing is that oftentimes doctors and therapists or other coaches or whatever they don't understand the what we're doing um, so if we educate them like yeah I mean there's so many I've said this like there's so many things going on with like the relational stuff the background trauma stuff the anxiety depression whatever um, life goals that you know the role I get to help you all with is like helping them stabilize their relationship with food and body image so it's just one less thing that is muddying the waters of what you're trying to do um, and so and I express that with the same clients as well it's like you know us being able to tackle these topics these two or three topics around self-care and body image and your relationship with food free it's gonna free up so much more of your time to work on these other things that like are the bigger overlays of, of how your life functions and so intuitive eating can help us do that by building more trust when you have trust it's not something you have to obsess about that's typically the way that I introduce intuitive eating so I hope this video was helpful um, I encourage you to try it out so please if you try it out anytime this week I will comment on it if you want some feedback and just you know some general feedback that's great um, you know we are going to be doing um, a supervision group in here at some point probably next year um, in kind of a group kind of way that way um, a kind of a membership group kind of way where it's like um, you know you can do as many meetings as you want to you can just you know I'm gonna have a different um, you know kind of like skill sets and tool sets as well of like tips that you can work through get you know get feedback on as well so it's gonna be um, you know, you're gonna have some choice. You're not gonna be as locked into like I have to do this for a certain amount of time, or um, you know, you get to kind of you know choose your level of involvement if that makes sense and how much um, support you need. So anyway, that's coming later down the line. But today, try this out. Try this out when you do your introductory calls of really listening to like where you're feeling like when you start to ask questions about food or body. What's the responses? And that's going to give you the indication of like, well, how far I can push with this without totally scaring people off. Because, um, you know, sometimes, you know, some of our clients, they take longer to warm up to the concept. They still really want support. Or some people come in really ready to rock and roll, but they're not, um, yeah, they're, just, they're ready to go. I mean, and some of us, that's the only people we work with is people who are really, really ready to go. A lot of times I get people, I would say, 75% of my clients are really ready to go. The other percentage of people who are like, you know, something spoke to me that I needed to contact you, I'm not for sure why, or somebody told me I should contact you, and they might not be quite ready for that. Like the full on, let's do, let's jump in. They're just trying to, un try to like, there's a part, those, those parts that want that freedom are bumping against the parts of like, but I still wanna hold on to my thing um, just as much, but if you give them the droplets they need to maybe play with that and come back around, they're going to be more ready um, when they when you know that part that's still kind of trying to hang on isn't quite getting them where they need to go. But they have heard those concepts for you in the way that they could take it in. They're more likely to come back around either with you or somebody else or some other thing. But um, you will have made the road more ready for them so again i hope this video was helpful please share it with your coach and dietitian friends that you think um are struggling with this piece of the work of like how to introduce this but not basically blow their circuits <laughs> to where they're like i can't do this it's too much for me that's not what we want um we want to meet people where they're at so thank you so much for watching and i will be um Tag me, please, if you have questions, and I will get to your, your questions or your concerns. So thanks so much, and take care. Bye.